that with all the data that Hell Hades is collecting, yeah, they haven't been nerfed. This is where American education fails. You can share information and you don't have to be a dick. It's all just nonsense that people like you Hold don't up. understand the macro level statistics. I saw this post here this morning. August 2024, Clan Boss Chess reporting. There is a user by the name of Dijaj Makliun who is reporting and collecting data on the sum of his ancients, voids, sacreds, epic and legendary books. And these are for this past year, starting September of 2023. He also breaks it down even further, and he's only going over Nightmare and Ultra Nightmare. Note that the rates are based on the 2x top chests from Nightmare and UNM only. Lower levels are not recorded. Expected rates that you see right here on this side in the blue are from Ayumi Love. I thought this was interesting. So on this bar graph here, we see uh, month by month, the entire month, by the way. So for an example, uh, September, he got eight sacreds, 10 voids, and 42 ancients from clan boss. Most recently in August of 2024, he got 46, 13, and then six sacreds respectively. Down here, you can see he got 15 epics and 11 legendary books, so on and so forth. So you guys can see the breakdown, right? Legendaries on the top in the red. Some of the epic books that he got are on the bottom month by month. And I always think it's really cool when people are able to collect data like this. Now, before you guys are getting in the comments talking about statistics and can't just look at one person's sample size, I, I get that. I get that. But still, this is interesting. And this would be hard to do to get a huge sample size. And I'm not reporting on this to tell you hey you should or should not do something i'm just sharing this guy's input nightmare and ultra nightmare down here on nightmare he's breaking down the shards that he's gotten and the books so ancient voids sacreds books epic legendaries it shows here in this month of august he got 17 ancients so far 17 ancients three voids one sacred over here we're looking at the actual rate so the actual rate on this side for both nightmare and ultra nightmare show what the actual percentage drop of what he got was versus the expected rate that came from Ayumi Love. The expected rates, for an example, show here that on Ultra Nightmare, you're expected to get about half the time on a month by a month basis, 50% ancients, but here he actually got 46.77. Uh, sacreds, these are to note here, expected rate is 13.67, 8%, 8.06% is what he got for sacreds this month. And by the way, don't forget to use this promo code to get whatever I'm about to get. And we get a five-star chicken and some energy right before a fusion. That's pretty huge. Seems a little bit interesting, I guess. But the other side to this is like, look, his legendary books that he got was 25% when it was only expected to be 10%. And so, you know, I, I thought that was pretty interesting. And it really got me thinking when I was looking at this, like, oh, I remember during COVID or before COVID, before ultra, uh, before unkillable comps became a normal thing, I thought to myself like, oh, this is something that I don't think I've seen people talk about. Later, we're going to figure out that people have talked about this. In fact, big content creators have already talked about this. I didn't know about it, but I was like, I feel like they nerfed the drop rates for clan boss because it feels like and memory doesn't always serve me correctly. You guys know I have the memory of a goldfish, but I thought they shadow nerfed the rewards, but I have no proof. So obviously I'm not going to tell people that I'm just going to explain that, Hey, this is what I feel. And I don't think there's anything wrong with people telling other people like how you feel or, or whatever, just as long as you're not shoving it down people's throats and saying, this is what it is. I explained that in a comment down here. Oh, I feel like CB rewards got shadow nerfed sometime a few years ago when un unkillable comps became common, because I remember having like a bunch of sacreds and a bunch of legendary books. At one point, I had like over 100 legendary books all from Clan Boss. And so Kamen Mott, nothing against him, but he's just like, even with the data in front of your face, you still claim that CB rewards were nerfed. Wild. Wow. At first, it was just just this, right? This is all he left, and he gave me a down vote, so I obviously downvoted him too. And like, that's fine. That's fine if you don't necessarily agree with, with what somebody says, but you also don't necessarily need, need to be an absolute donut about it. You know what I mean? So I was just like, you know, I'm not going to engage with it because you know, I've been dealing with a lot of shit talker haters lately and I'm just not in, like I've got things to do and I'm not in the mood. So and I just woke up. I even had my coffee. So I just told them I, I just said, have the day you deserve. That's all I said. And I left it at that. And this other guy, DM Caton, commented. He said, I mean, you could absolutely interpret this data as showing a potential nerf to sacred shard drop rates 
the original poster got 37.7 uh, less percent sake rids than the supposed average in the past year. That's pretty bad. Granted, they got 36.6 more Lego books than the average, which evens it out value-wise, but personally, I would rather have a sacred shard than a Lego book, which is exactly kind of the same thing that I was thinking about, right? Would you rather have books or a sacred shard? Me, I, I'd rather take the sacred shard, right? Now we could go back and forth on that, but uh, let's go here. I said my thoughts exactly. And then I explained, I remember playing a long time ago. I just recall getting shards and Lego books all the time. Like they dropped consistently back to back, which they did. Like I remember getting back to back sh shards Two, two drops on like UNM, for example. Then it seems, of course, and again, just a feeling like it got nerfed. I would rather take a sacred over a Lego book, but then there are those that would take the latter to the former. He responds and I, you know, he provided value here. He says, Hell Hades has literally done a video on this. If you're running HH Optimizer, it shows your collected data. He has the macro level data for thousands of players. The average is unchanged. This, I did not know. This is good information. And again, not everybody knows everything. And I don't think there's anything wrong with people not knowing a bunch of things because not everybody fucking knows everything. But this was cool to know. He's got thousands of players data. He says, yeah, the average doesn't change. And I said, thank you for the valuable input. I'm going to search for the video. And then I saw that he updated this and I was like, never mind. I saw, uh, thank you for streamlining. Everybody should be thankful for, uh, you know, giving giving the links because he provided the links uh, for people that don't want to scroll down to view more information hell hades assessing the drop rates loaded by thousands of players using the optimizer this is cool i didn't know about this see i didn't even see this video but he's gonna dive into it and people here are saying this is tremendous not only does it put some angst to rest but holds them accountable uh, currently on a sacred scarcity streak, so this is good to hear. I think the last ticket I received was the day after I fused Razzlefarg. Haven't received one. You're a gem to the community. So glad to hear they fixed the bunny. Love the investment stats. Actual figures instead of feelings. This is exactly perfect. But at the same time, like people like me don't always know everything. And yeah, we base our uh, we base everything off feeling until we see things that are in front of our face. And I can't look at one person's things here and say this is fact but now that i know that hey somebody big somebody reliable has who has more credibility not that this guy doesn't have credibility but i mean you guys are already seeing it he's got the data of thousands probably at this point tens of thousands because this was a year ago data on clan boss rewards i think it's safe to say that with all the data that hell hades is collecting yeah they haven't been nerfed but again i wouldn't have known that also three years ago oh, again i didn't know this three years ago a similar story of nerf drop rates debunked here Cool, dude. Thank you for sharing that. I didn't know that. We're clan boss rewards and nerfs, so they break it down here. And then he goes on again. He says, Hell Hades reportings were based on thousands of users logged in that there was factually no nerf to the clan boss. This was over two years ago. This was over three years ago. This is more, there's a more recent video of him breaking it down again. I'd say within the past six months, it's all just nonsense. So this is, this is, you know, this is where it kind of changes, right? Because all, all up to this point, he was providing value. He was providing insight to the overall arcing academic conversation here, right? So he says, it's all just nonsense that people like you don't understand the macro level statistics. Found the video jumped to around nine minutes. You can share information and educate without casting judgment on others and trying to make others feel small. It's cool. Cool you understand macro level statistics, but knowledge should not make you feel empowered, nor does it give you the right to stand over others. I probably know, about, know more about some subject than you do. Someone else may know more than we do. Regardless, we should be encouraging and uplifting others. Even if you are providing insight, your method of education can easily make others fear backlash and feel like they should not speak up. And then I said, I obviously intend to keep speaking because this is for a video. But I just want you to know, to know the effects words can have on most. I want you to know that I'm not mad or upset with you. And this is this holds true, right? Even outside the context of the internet, you think about being in school, right? Especially in American education. This is where American education fails often, right? There's, there, and that, we could go to the ends about the American education system, but like two prominent things that I saw, and I went to both the private school and I went to a public school. So I was able to see the differences, but in the public school system, I grew up with a lot of people who did not speak up. I grew up with people who purposely would keep their head down and wouldn't ask questions. This was a problem. This is a huge problem, by the way. This still perseverates. I guarantee you, I'm willing to put money on it, that we can still find a good chunk of children who to this fucking day 
in the American education system, at least, I don't know about the other ones, they don't speak up for fear of backlash, for fear of backlash from the teachers, for fear of backlash from the other students. This is what I'm getting at, right? I saw this happen all the time. A kid would raise his hand, ask the questions, boom, all the other kids around him, oh man, why you gotta ask a question? You know, maybe you have one kid who's just a little bit slower and he, he can't like really understand everything or she can't understand everything right away. She just needs to ask for clarification again. And the teacher's just like, I just explained this. I'm like, bro, like it's, if somebody has the want or the need to ask a question or share an opinion, it should not be shut the fuck down. It shouldn't. It really fucking shouldn't. It doesn't make any sense that there's people like this guy that came out are over here like, yeah, he's providing insight. Like he's got Comet Karma and whatever. So he's he's an active talker and, I, and I've got nothing against him personally. But at the same time, it's just like, bro, you can do this. You can share information and you don't have to be a dick. I'm not asking you to be a fucking baby. I'm not saying like be a snowflake and cater to everybody, but I'm saying you, you can just be absolutely pragmatic, all right? But you can do so without calling people or casting people down, saying people like you don't understand, or wow, even with the data in front of you, you still claim this shit, like it's wild. Like bro, you can say all this stuff and say like, hey, uh, actually this is this, 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 and this, and this, and this, right? It shouldn't be the case that we live in a world where people are afraid to speak up because other people are going to try to make them feel stupid for asking a question or sharing an opinion. I grew up with so many people who were afraid to talk, who were afraid to speak up because they were scared. Their question was stupid. There is no stupid question, guys. I feel like it's more important to ask a question and be wrong than to not ask a question at all. Even if people do, and people are always going to do this because it's just, I don't know if it's in your whatever culture you're you're in i don't know if it's just the, and i don't mean like race or ethnicity or anything i, I just mean like the, the culture right like every city every every state every country has their own type of quote unquote culture or just the community or or whatever it is but at no point should you if you're listening to me right now at no point should you ever make somebody feel small because they don't understand everything it is more important for you to uplift and strongly encourage people to continue asking questions because when we ask questions we spread knowledge we didn't become the top of the food chain by ourselves all right our human history is a collective it is a collective of all the knowledge that we've shared. And if every time somebody asked the question, somebody else made that person feel small. Well, I mean, what, what do you think would have happened? Maybe we wouldn't have gotten so far. And, uh, you know, I, I got to give it to him. He kind of and I say kind of because this sorry if it came off that way doesn't show that he is taking responsibility. He or she or they are taking responsibility for the thing that they said or did wrong. If you say, oh, sorry if you read it that way, or sorry if it came off that way, it's not showing remorse or an acceptance of something that they did wrong. It alleviates responsibility, right? Because words are very important and you need to be able to discern and ascertain what people mean by this. If he had said, sorry that I said this, or sorry that my words X, Y, and Z, you know what I mean? So that's why I'm saying kinda. And I think that's important to point out for you, maybe in your real life even, because people who use structured sentences and words like this don't often have a growth mindset. A growth mindset is somebody who is willing to accept that they were wrong and grow from it. People who are willing to accept the mistake and grow from it. Those are the people that you want to surround yourself with. Those are the people that you want to interact with. If they aren't this type of person, kind of speaking for myself here, uh, personal opinion, you don't want to spend too much of your valuable time on them, probably. He said, sorry if it came out that way, but oftentimes it just feels, keyword, feels, again, like people are constantly looking to blame Polarian for anything under the sun. True, this is absolutely true right here. People are looking to blame Polarian for anything under the sun. It, it's it's a very normal thing to do, especially within the raid community. You know, for all the crap that Polarium does pull, uh, when I talk to the, um, the managers who run the content creator program, I, I sometimes feel badly for them because they get all these questions and they all get all these, these backlashes and they feel... Because like, I don't think you guys realize a lot of the things that you guys complain to us about in the comment section, I promise you, the other content creators are relaying that, those same vehement messages, back to the managers in the content creator program. So, you know, it's, it's just the two of them and they receive everything. So all of the laments, complaints, and rage that you guys share, I promise you, they're receiving that 
as well. And it makes me kind of feel badly for them because it's just like, yeah, this, this statement makes sense. People want to blame somebody when something doesn't go their way. And again, this is natural, right? This is even just beyond video games. Like, I'm, not, I'm definitely not diving into politics or religion, but I'm just saying, think about politics and religion. Think about it. When we're looking for someone to blame, think about politics and religion. That's all I'm going to say. Now he says, I wasn't saying I'm some mathematician, by the way. I'm just stating that there is always a macro level statistics in life. True. But um, it's, it's one thing to say it. And then it's another thing to really do a deep dive and explain it to someone. When you can explain something very well to somebody who doesn't know something and explain it like they're a three-year-old or a six-year-old or a five-year-old, then you know that you, one, have the compassion to educate and two, that you know what you're talking about because you were able to break it down for them. I might have like explained the situation here a little bit with some passion, but it wasn't like passion or anger or anything or angst, or whatever you want to call it directed at K-Man. It kind of just reminded me of the education system. That was where the energy in my voice was coming from. So again, if, if this guy is watching me, like nothing against him, 100%, like I, I get where he's coming from. I understand why he responded that the way that he did. Yeah, once you understand why people do the things that they do, it makes it easier to not let it register on an emotional level. For an example, I'll share this with you guys. I most recently almost got into an altercation with somebody and I'm not gonna like dive too deeply into it. I walked away because my wife was around and I didn't want her to experience that side of me. Um, but like I explained it to her later because I've met people like the guy that tried to start something and I was like, you know, he felt a certain way and I was able to boil it down to probably he feels hurt over some specific stuff it's not anything on us it's more reflection on on him his past I, i'm not going to presume to know about this person's past or anything but judging based on his actions and the people that i've met who have done the same things and said the same things and acted in the same manner as this said person has i can kind of gauge at least reason it out in my head that this person acted this way because of xyz reasons and all this to say like you can stop and really think about why people are doing something, it'll make things less emotional for you. That helped me not to turn around and, you know, respond in kind, which I really wanted to, but I really had to think about my wife. And in a fight, nobody ever wins, I promise you. It, even if you think you, you won and you're standing over him and you knocked him out or whatever, I promise you, you didn't win. If I fought and I lost, well, guess what? Now we're even in further trouble. Or, or if something happened and we both got knocked out, you know what I mean? We were standing next to a swimming pool. Like, you know, my, my wife isn't going to carry both of us out. I, then he goes on, for further example, if someone dies tomorrow at 30, it seems to be an unlikely and unfair statistic. If someone lives to be 110, these are outliers. He's talking about outliers. But might be seen as good RNG. The quote unquote normal statistic to go by is the average or sometimes the mean life expe expectancy, right? It's a lot more apt to describe something and explain something in the context of averages and means. That's just the way that it needs to be. The example that applies to Raid. You might have some bad RNG streaks. You might get two sacreds in a month. Well, someone else got 15. True. You'll eventually over time flatten your average. He's talking about like over the month or over the course of like five years, right? To be more consistent with reality. But you might not see the normalness often. You might only look for the outliers and when things go bad for you, which is also a very human thing to do, right? Oftentimes, when we have a bunch of bad things happen to us, it's a lot easier to remember those things over the good things, right? For an example, YouTube, I get hundreds, thousands. I mean, I'm not that big, maybe hundreds. We'll say hundreds. I get hundreds of, um, you know, positive comments from you guys, people who are engaged in the conversation, people who want to be here for the community and, you know, who like being part of the channel and some people who just like to send positive vibes. But then I also get a bunch of people, not a bunch, I get a handful of people who just want to talk shit and who want to create problems and get into the comment section and fuck around with other people, casting judgment down on them and talking shit to them. And it's like, I'll admit, for some reason, I sometimes remember those guys a lot more than the other comments. Like, not to say that I diminish the value of the, the good comments, but those negative comments stand out a lot more. And I've talked to other content creators, same thing. And then I ended it by saying, it's cool, it's totally fine, I get it. I promise I wasn't trying to blame anyone, just trying to share a thought. Granted, I was lacking in information, information you provided. Now this gap in my knowledge has been filled and I no longer have to make statements such as this, meaning my, oh, I feel like this about the drop rates based on feelings. And thanks again for clarifying 
simplifying further, I liked how you talked about normalness and outliers because I think it's human nature to feel a certain way after these bad RNG. So what I'm doing here is I'm not exactly admonishing him for what I feel to be a negative way to relay information, but I'm uplifting him and looking at the positive things that he did do, paying attention to that, right? We're going to reinforce the behaviors that we want. So in the future, the next time I see this guy, I'm going to hope or at least you know, over a period of time, I would like to think that he's going to, into the future, educating others in a more objective way. I'm not saying you need to be nice. It's nice if you're nice, but it's more important that the conversation is centered around the information more so than it is on the people and the characters involved. It's more important that you objectively share and uplift others. 